Okay, awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining me today. Um, I appreciate you guys taking the time. Um, this is something that we developed at MJIC. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Jocelyn. I work for MJC. Anytime you have MI loans, just send it to MJC. <laughs> and basically, um, we developed this um, training last year, around mid-year when the market started shifting drastically and the rates started going up. And we thought, how can we help originators still be consistent and be successful in today's market? So we developed three strategies that um, we believe that if you stick to, you should be successful. So this is Playbook for Success, and it's going to cover three strategies in today's new market. So before I start, I do have to share this disclaimer that anything that I share today is just necessarily my uh, opinions and not necessarily that of MGIC. Um, and okay, so um, I want you to think back in the last two years, you know, 2020, 2022, even still beginning of the year, we, we had a fluctuation of loans. I mean, people were calling you, you were getting deals left and right. You know, they were just falling mo mostly like an apple falling off of a tree. It was like you were busy and Somehow during that time, things shifted and now we aren't as busy. Um, so it's up to us to really go out there and start, you know, cultivating new relationships, um, staying consistent about the relationships that we currently have. And much like this picture, uh, we have to get up on that ladder. We have to pick those apples now. It's up to us to get out there and make those deals come to us. They're no longer going to just fall on our laps. Like, they have been, but there's still a lot of business, much like, you know, in this picture, there's still a lot of apples on the tree. So if we all work together, then we can, you know, get out there and start cultivating new deals and still staying on top of like our current relationships that we have. This is a um, snapshot of the last 10 years. Um, and it covers all up to 2022 because, you know, we just started 2023. But, you know, a lot of people last year when rates started going up, they started getting this perception of, oh, we're in the worst market ever. There's no deal. Like, you know, kind of just giving up. You know, they had this mindset of like, I'm just going to give up because the market's so bad. But if you look at this data and um, you take uh, you take out 2020 and 2021 data, that because those two years were very unrealistic. Um, and that's when just, you know, it was booming. But if you take out those two years, 2022 was still forecasted to be the third best year in the last 15 years. So it was actually a really good market to produce, much like the market that we're in today. It's still a really good market to produce. Uh, we just have to go out there and strategically get these deals. So um, it's all about changing your mindset, changing your perspective of what today's market is, because we cannot compare to 2020 and 2021. Like it's just, it, there's no comparison. So um, the first uh, strategy that I want to share with you is engaging with your real estate partners. You know, we always hear, you know, go talk to your realtors, go talk to your realtors. And, but people always wonder like, okay, but what do I talk to them about? You know, like I want to go out there. I want to talk to agents, but what do I talk to them about? Well, we actually surveyed a bunch of real estate agents and we asked them, what's the one thing that you would want your loan officer to support you with? And they all said open houses um, because they're out there doing open houses. They also haven't been in person for like a, at least a year, you know, now getting back out there, but they're still like, they're barely getting out there as just as us, you know? So they are struggling with open houses um, and, you know, um, either having somebody present with them or, you know, just, you know, having somebody that's going to like um, bring them resources for their open houses. So we at MJSC have developed a uh, platform called Creative Cafe. You can't see it, but it's right under the green uh, thing, but it's MJSC's Creative Cafe and it's a marketing platform. This platform will help you be able to um, co-brand flyers for you and your real estate partners to have on hand to be able to take them to the open houses, 
provide them with these flyers. There's infographics, there's checklists that you can print out with your picture, your realtor's picture, and you can bring them to these open houses. And I think it's really a great way to get in front of your agents because like I said, they have so many things they need to do for open houses. If you can come up to them and say, hey, I'm gonna take care of your marketing. Don't worry about marketing. I'll bring all your marketing for your open houses. That's one less thing that you're taking off their plate that they're gonna appreciate and value. So, and it's a creative cafe, you have to have access to it. So not everybody gets access to it, but if you want access to creative cafe, send me an email and I'll go ahead and give you access so that you have um, all these flyers available for you and your referral partners. And they're very easy to customize. Here's an example of what you would find on creative cafe. You know, 10 things you should avoid doing before closing your mortgage loan. And then at the very bottom, you would just plug in your picture, um, your realtor's picture, your information, boom, print it, ready to go. You put it in a nice folder, you bring it to them and you, with your business cards. And yeah, they'll they have all this information ready for their open houses. Here's another example of what you'll find on Creative Cafe. It's a monthly budget worksheet. I love this monthly budget worksheet because personally, I do my budget every single month. And I think it's super important that everybody stays on top of it, especially if they want to become a first time home buyer, you know, and maybe they've never budgeted for themselves. This is a very like less invasive way to prequal them because you can find out what exactly do you pay every single month? You know, what are your, your liabilities? Let's write them down and then find out if you could afford a mortgage payment. So, because sometimes they walk into open houses, they don't necessarily want to do a full pre-qualification right then and there. They're kind of like, I don't know, I'm, I'm not ready, you know, but this could be a great way to have a conversation with them and let them know, okay, you don't have to do a full application, but let's find out what your debt is, you know, and maybe do a, a quick estimate of your DTI. And I can let you know if you could afford, you know, a $400,000 house or 500,000, whatever the case is. So this is a great, um, budget worksheet that you can, again, put your picture at the bottom, put your realtor's pictures, customize it for the open houses and bring it to them and then have these conversations with buyers. Here's another example of what you'll find on Creative Cafe and it's our uh, credit score uh, flyer. A lot of times buyers will come into the open houses and they'll always say, well, I'm just waiting because I'm fixing my credit, you know, but they don't even know what they need to fix on their credit. So this is a great way to break down, you know, what do we truly look at as a mortgage lender? You know, what types of, what type of credit do you want to have? You know, you want to have 35% payment history. You want to have 15% length of history. Like these are things that they really need to be focusing on that they or may not be aware of. So if you can break down this information to them and simplify it so that they can have a better vision on how they should be, um, you know, tackling their credit score, this would be a great way to put them in that right direction. So this would be a great flyer to have for your agents at the open houses. And here's a bonus tip. When you're engaging with your real estate partners, you want to help them also get in front of buyers, not just at open houses. So what we believe is you can work with property management companies. If you've never like heard of how property management companies work, a lot of times they get uh, bonuses when people leave the units because they have to get a new um, person tenant in that unit. They sometimes can price up the uh, unit higher, so then they get incentives for that. So being able to work with um, a property management company is really um, awesome because they also, for the tenants that live there, they do like happy hours, movie nights, they have like little like uh, incentives that they do for the tenants to, you know, be happy where they live, stuff like that. For example, I lived in downtown LA and all the property management um, did was always like give us like, you know, snack time, movie times, like um, social events, you know, and it was nice, you know, and, but it was also nice because everybody in the community would come together and we would all socialize. But imagine being able to tell a property management company, hey, I can come in to do an event for you guys. And at the same time, um, you know, introduce yourself to all these tenants that potentially could be leaving in the next year or two. So working with property management companies to host events is a really good way to get in front of 
potential buyers. And it's also a great way to connect with your agents and let them know, hey, I'm going to go do an event for, you know, X, Y, Z property management company in downtown, whatever. I'm just using that as an example. They come with me and, you know, we can tackle this together. And you never know who you're going to meet that's ready to, you know, stop renting. So while you're in front of them and you're doing these events, you're going to want to have resources that are going to help you explain um, information to them. MJC has a buy now versus wait calculator. And if you go to um, our readiness website, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it, but it's a website for consumers to learn about the home buying process. And you don't need special access from me. You just go to www.readiness.com. And um, I'll say it again, www.readiness.com. That is a website where you can help educate consumers all about the home buying process. And within that website, that's where you'll find our buy now versus wait calculator, where you will be able to explain to the tenants that they're actually ready to buy now instead of waiting additional years for a down payment. Um, you also, in our Get Ready series, um, which is within Creative Cafe, you will have a whole campaign that's going to help them get ready to buy a house. So if you link up with a property management company, you can tell them, hey, can I come in for the next, you know, three weeks and do events for you guys and talk to them about a getting ready series, you know, in case they have questions about the market or whatever. And if they say yes, all you got to do is go to Creative Cafe, which I said, if you want access to it, let me know and I'll set you up. Um, and then you just got to print out all the get ready series and have that available for the consumers. Um, and like I said, you can partner for these presentations with your real estate partners. So that's another way to engage your realtors and be able to bring value to their business. Does anybody have questions on the first strategy? No? Okay. Um, second strategy is engaging with financial advisors. Um, and if anybody has questions online, put it in the chat. Yeah, right now I just put the the link that you took. Okay, cool. Yes, that's readiness.com. And that's where you can find our buy now versus wait calculator for those of you that are online. And so um, the second strategy is all about engaging financial advisors. You always hear people say, go talk to financial advisors. But I can tell you, I cover all LA County, Ventura County, the coast and the Central Valley. I probably have a handful of loan officers that actually work with financial advisors, which blows my mind because this is the strategy that you should always be working on. You should always be trying to get in front of financial planners because they are um, somebody that can refer you business and will walk you through. Um, when you are out there looking for new financial planners, here's a list of six different types of financial planners. If you've never connected with any of these financial planners, these are the ones that you want to be focused. So if you look at number three, the certified public accountant, most people think, oh yeah, well, I always talk to CPAs. Okay, that's a great start. But if you look at the list, there's a lot more financial planners that you can be focused in on and targeting. You know, there's some that focus on budgeting, on retirement, on investments. Others are focused on managing mutual funds. Others are designated for like um, comprehensive financial education exams, practitioners. They have different types of clientele. So all of these people have different needs. So maybe you are really good at uh, budgeting for your customers. Maybe you want to connect with a certified financial planner and say, hey, I know that your job requires you to help your customers with budgeting. I have great resources. I'm great at doing that. You know, I can help you with your customers. And the more you connect with them as like what they're doing, you can help with that, uh, help them do, the easier that you're going to develop that relationship. So we always say, first, do your research on which type of financial planners you want to work with because they all do different things and you can connect with them depending on what style they want to do, how they work and what they're focused in on. Um, the financial uh, planner opportunity, if you've never heard of a uh, financial planner association uh, website, if you go on to this website, for those of you that are online, this is the website that you would go to, you can find um, 
chapters. So financial planners actually have their own association with chapters. You can host a breakfast for them, you know, at their next meeting, and you can get in front of all these financial planners in one shot. So um, you can go onto their website, find out where their next meeting are, is, or even if they're meeting on Zoom, you can ask them, can I join your meeting on Zoom? I'd like to introduce myself, talk about some benefits that I have at my company that could potentially help your customers. Because a lot of times financial planners are helping um, their clients, you know, with like saving for a home. So if you can connect with them from the beginning, you're more likely to get that referral. Here's an example of how many financial certified financial planners there is nationwide. There's about 92,800 certified financial planners. Um, in Oregon, there's about 1,000. In California, there's about 10,000. Washington, there's about 2,000. Texas, there's about almost 6,500 6, financial planners. And I only highlight the states around California because we all know you could do business with somebody in Texas. You could do referral, referrals from somebody in Washington. So these are some of the states that, you know, I feel like it's it's crucial that, you know, you're, of course, focused on California, but also that you, you consider other areas where you may be able to get uh, new business and get referrals. Um, each uh, certified financial planner, if you didn't already know, uh, manages anywhere between 250 to 500 clients. So imagine if you just focus this year alone on getting five financial planners as a good solid like referral partner, and they're managing anywhere from 200 to 500 clients, you're bound to get a deal referred to you, you know, from those five. So I just think it's a really missed opportunity that a lot of people are not doing enough. And if you break down the information, you can see there's a lot of opportunity to work with financial planners. Here's a loan officer testimonial that we got. Um, he gets all his business from financial planners. And he says the loans are easy squeezy because they're working with a different clientele. So when you're getting a referral from a financial planner, your loan process is going to be easier than a standard person that you met um, that was referred by a realtor that maybe has never been um, financially prepared by somebody. You know, um, when financial planners are working with their clients, they tend to be more financial savvy. So you're going to get a better um, refer a referral from them. Also, um, uh, he said, you know, when, when he's getting referrals, it's better to get a referral from a financial planner versus a realtor for that reason, because they tend to be a little bit more prepared. Maybe they've already purchased a home, they're buying a second home. And so it just is a better uh, referral a resource, um, according to his testimonial, than the referrals he gets from realtors. Um, although remember, you want to stay consistent with your realtors, and this is just the second strategy that you want to focus on. Also, um, financial planners tend to be a little bit more loyal because they don't have 20, 30 loan officers calling on them, much like the realtors do. It's easier to get that loyalty from a financial planner um, right off the bat than when you're calling on a realtor. They just got 10 other calls that from loan officers. So um, they're way more loyal when it comes to working with you and their clients pay for their advice. So because they have clients that are paying them for this advice, when they say, you know, what's your name? Carlos. When they say, okay, I'm going to refer you to Carlos. Like he knows exactly what you need. He already knows about your financial status. He's going to be able to help you to be able to afford that home that you've been, you know, planning for the last five years they're going to call you because they pay, they're pay. they paying that person for that advice. So they're going to take you more serious. They're going to be more committed to the process because their financial advisor said, go to Carlos. Like, so it's like you're getting a way more warmer lead, you know, that's more prepared. The fifth um, thing that he suggested is financial planners don't require referrals, much like your realtors that say, hey, I've sent you five people, you haven't sent me any. Um, you're not going to hear that from financial advisors. They have their own business. They're focused on their clients. So they're not going to expect for a referral. They're just going to expect that when they're sending you someone, you're going to do a great job because that's their client that they've been working for X amount of years and they want to make sure that their clients are getting taken care of. So um, you typically do not um, have financial planners asking for referrals. 
and um, they may refer you to other financial planners. So the more financial planners you know, the more they you know might know other ones that you might be able to work with. And bonus, they don't work weekends, which leaves your weekends to working with your agents and leaves you the week to focus on getting financial planners. So ideally, you, you have enough just in these two strategies to be consistently out there getting more leads, getting more business. Because if you're focused on Monday through Friday with your uh, financial planners and then working weekends with your agents, there's no reason why you're not getting those deals in the door, you know? So how you can connect with financial planners, just so we can do a review, do your research again, find out which type of financial advisors you want to work with. For example, Edward Jones is a perfect opportunity. How many of us have seen an Edward Jones office? They're everywhere. Every single Edward Jones is a perfect start because they're motivated. They have clients already. They're working, you know, much like us every single day in the office. So any Edward Jones offices that you can connect with, that would be a perfect uh, place to start. And Jason, who is the loan officer that gave us his interview, um, he said, just make an appointment. Show up to these offices, make an appointment, maybe show up with bagels, coffee, say you want to meet with a branch manager, you want to connect with um, their financial advisors, you want to learn more about their business and how you guys can work together. As long as you go in there with that mentality and you focus on education, why are you the local expert? Why should they be sending their clients to you? And you learn their language because, like I said, each of them are going to be focused on different things. Somebody's maybe focused on retirement. Somebody's focused on, you know, budgeting. Others are focused on investments. So if you learn their language and you focus on educating them on the market and your business and why they should send you clients, you're going to get green lights. You're going to get okays from them to come in. Um, I have a loan officer that works in Beverly Hills, and he has a whole branch that he works with of uh, certified financial planners. He gets anywhere between two to three deals a month from just that branch, which I think is pretty good, you know? So if you, again, you can stay focused, do your research and get in front of like Edward Jones and I'm sure there's other ones. Um, you may have a great uh, strategy and you may get more um, loans from them. Here's an example of a company on the right-hand side um, Momentify. Momentify is a company that MGIC linked up with uh, last year, and they actually created a loan officer guide to working with financial advisors. So if you're interested in reading this guide, it's going to like basically give you step by step on how you should be working with financial advisors. So if that's something that interests you, you simply go on to the website that's on the left hand side. It's called Loan Officer Hub. And on the search bar on the top right corner, you're going to put loan officer guide to working with financial advisors, and it should pop up. You download that, and it'll even give you examples on how you should be approaching financial advisors. And if you don't already know anything about Loan Officer Hub, Loan Officer Hub is another resource that MJC has developed for you. Uh, where you can go on and you can learn about how to, uh, you can learn about new strategies on how to work with consumers, referral partners, realtors. There's blogs on here. This whole website was created for loan officers in mind, and we we provide uh, tools on there, presentations for you guys. We even have a leaders board where you can read about other top loan officers that you know are very successful and are giving back to their community. So. If you're not familiar with Loan Officer Hub, that's another resource that I would highly suggest you, you know, log on to. You don't need special access from me. You can just go to Loan Officer Hub, Google it, and it'll be the first thing that pops up. And like I said, that's where you'll find the Loan Officer Guide to Working with Financial Advisors. Now, Momentify, that company, not only did they create a guide, but they've also de designed a course uh, where you can actually teach seven hours of CE courses to financial planners. So again, if you really get on that mindset of I'm going to target a whole branch, um, if you didn't know, um, financial planners require 15 hours of CE classes every single um, time they renew their license. So if you can connect with a branch and offer to teach them seven hours of CE classes, this would be a great way to bring value to them right off the bat. 
and you would just go to uh, Momentify's website. I know you guys can't see it, uh, but it's right underneath here. It's called Momentify, um, the company, and you would just research uh, their classes on how to work with financial um, advisors, and they have a monthly or a yearly membership where they pretty much will make you the guru on how to work with financial advisors. Um, so if that's something of interest to you, like I said, it's a monthly membership or an annual, um, contact them for more information. But I think it's a great opportunity to be able to, um, you know, teach these CU courses to them and then learn how are others working with financial advisors. Does anybody have any questions on that strategy? No? Cool. So then the third uh, strategy that we're going to talk, talk about is engaging with human resource departments. We believe you should go talk to human resources departments. Why? Because who works with human resources departments? Employees. What do employees have? Employment. What do we need on the 10 of 3? <laughs> Income. <laughs> and so if you can connect with someone at HR and you can um, say, hey, I want to come in and I want to host some classes for your employees, um, then you're more likely to be able to get in front of potential buyers. Here's the snapshot of just the human resource department in for Los Angeles County. So just uh, for Los Angeles County, there's about 10 million people that work for their HR department in um, LA County. So there's about anywhere between, um, I think there's, how many says uh, 4,800? There's one re, uh, human resource department per 531,000. So imagine how many human resource department are just in the um, county of LA, you know? So you can go on and I just simply Google this information and you can find a list of every single human resource department in um, the city of LA. And if you click on one, like I clicked on the El Segundo one, it's going to give you not only the name of the human resource department, the address, but a phone number as well. So if you can call them and introduce yourself and let them know you want to create a financial wellness program for their employees, they're going to be excited about it because, and we'll talk more about this, um, but they're, they are looking for ways to bring value to their employees. And if you position it in a way where you're coming to create a financial wellness program for them, um, then you're more likely to get a yes from them. Here's another snapshot of the whole um, LA County. There's over 519,000 Employ employers. So every single employer has an HR department that you can connect with. So just to kind of give you the mindset of like this opportunity is huge and it will bring you in front of a lot of potential buyers. Um, and just so you get a bit better idea of why this is important, HR departments now have their own conferences. Like this is a snapshot of the conference that's happening in May of this year. Um, they're going to all be in person and they're all focused on comp plans, benefits, wellness packages. How can we retain our employees? What do we need to do differently? So again, if you can approach them and let them know you want to help them with their wellness programs and within the wellness program, you want to create a financial wellness program for their employees. And you're going to teach them all about, you know, um, pre-qualifying, saving, budgeting, buying a home, maintaining financial responsibility, all those things that you already do as a loan officer. You package them up pretty and you say you want to do it as a financial wellness program, you're most likely to get that HR to say, yeah, sure, let's come in, let's talk about how we can introduce that to our employees because they're already focused on this. So here's another snapshot of the HR um, department's opportunity. If you go onto the EDD website and it's, for some reason, uh, you cannot find this particular um, link. Let me know because it does take some time to find it on the ADD website. But there is this site um, page on the ADD where you can um, get a snap of every single employer in the state of California. And say you were to like funnel it down, state of California, and you bring up this whole site on the right hand side. Not only does it give you the company's name, but it even tells you how many employees they have. So they have anywhere between 1,000 to 5,000 employees just in this department. So imagine you just need one HR department. If you see, we've already gone through over 20 HR on like just three slides. 
there's like, and the list goes on of how many HR departments there is just in LA, just in California. So if you can go onto this website, you can find out more information. Say you wanted to work with a hospital and you wanted to work with their HR department. If, if you click on it, it's not only gonna give you their name and what type of business it is, but their address, a person to contact at HR with their phone number. Like that's a huge way to structure your morning. Say, I'm gonna call five HR departments today. You know, all you need is one. Because if you can see, all you need is one that has a thousand to 5,000 people. And you can get in front of all those employees and you can be that preferred um, lender for them. Again, other ways that you can find out uh, where HR executives are, Chamber of Commerce. Um, I personally just moved to the um, to uh, Simi Valley, and uh, for me, it's very important to be a part of my community. So I started going to the Chamber of Commerce in Simi Valley. I can tell you, I've already made a financial advisor, a payroll specialist, and one HR executive just by attending those meetings. I wasn't focused on that. I was just going there because I like to meet new people, and I'm new to the area, and I was looking for friends. So I went there just, you know, casually. I'm here for friends. I'm here to network. And all of a sudden I started thinking, wow, I now noticed that because I've, we've done this, I've done this presentation a few times that there are people in these chambers of commerce meetings. So if you're not going to your chamber of commerce, I highly suggest you'd be surprised that there's payroll specialists, there's HR personnel and even realtors. I've met realtors at them as well. So um, that's an, a great place to find out um find hr executives and when you do start connecting with hr executives you want to find out who their wellness manager is because if you remember the slide before that's one of the topics that they're focused in on not only are they focused on comps and benefits but they're focused on wellness that's super important for hr right now and so if you can find out who the wellness manager is that's the person you want to link up with and also there's the society of human resource management that's a local HR association, much like the financial planners association that I told you guys about the HR um, HR actually has their own association and it's called the Society of Human Resources Management. So you may want to look them up on Google, find out if they have chapters, find out if they have meetings and get in front of all the HRs, you know, because you just need one to say yes. And then once you find out who the wellness manager is, Maybe you're having trouble, you're having some difficulties actually getting a meeting with them. You keep calling and they keep saying, oh, we'll transfer you to their voice button. Maybe they don't call you back. Check out LinkedIn. Every uh, by, um, HR personnel manager, manager has a LinkedIn. So you can go out to LinkedIn. You can find out who that person is, um, befriend them, send them a message. Hey, I've been wanting to connect with you. I'd love to do some voicemails. Um, I'm, just, I'm just saying there's ways to connect with all these people and you just need one. Um, focus again on that employee wellness leader or wellness manager so that you can get in front of them. And when you do get in front of them and they say, okay, what can you help me with? You want to focus on education versus consultation. You're not going to tell them, I want to go in there and pre-qualify your employees. No, I want to go in there and educate your employees. And how you want to position it is you want to tell them, I want to create a financial wellness program for your employees. If you can say those words, you're most likely to like get a green light from them because again, they're focused on this. So if you know you go in there, you can be prepared to talk about your organization, talk about yourself, and let them know that you want to help create a detailed roadmap for their employees to learn about the home buying process within this financial wellness program. Once you get the yes, you call Jocelyn and we've already created a roadmap so that you're able to teach this information to them in as little as a seven week series of classes. And when I say classes, it can be a quick 30 minute Zoom, um, you know, or you can join, join them at their offices and you can host these classes in 30 minutes, but it's gonna be a seven week series of classes um, within this financial um, wellness program that you're gonna pitch. And you're gonna let them know that within these classes, you're gonna have um, other um, people joining you, such as a credit expert, a real estate partner, an appraiser, if you know one, a trusted home inspector, um, a homeowner's insurance person, and then myself. And 
you're looking for assistance when you get to the MI side, um, I can help you um, teach these classes to the employees. Um, so basically, this is what it will look like. Um, the financial wellness program is going to take them from A to Z about getting pre-qualified to closing on their loan. And I'm going to walk you through on what would these classes entail. So say first week, they say, okay, you have the green light, you can teach this financial wellness. The first week, you're going to focus on teaching them about getting pre-approved. And what's the difference between getting a pre-qual and getting a pre-approval? You're going to use our website, which I mentioned, readiness.com. You're going to bring up our glossary on readiness.com. And you're going to explain what the difference between these two things. You're also going to explain to them about their credit. What's important you know, about credit? What do they need to be mindful? Maybe you want to bring a credit expert so that the credit expert can answer some of their questions. Maybe they do want to buy a home, but again, they have that idea of, I got to work on my credit. But do you know what you need to work on as far as your credit? So this would be all or chapter uh, lesson one that you would teach credit and getting pre-qualified. Your second um, session um, that you would give them is uh, once you've been pre-qualified, now you begin your house hunt. Now that you know you're qualified for, in this example, 4,100, you simply go to readiness.com, you plug in that 4,100 on our home affordability calculator, and it's going to pop up what type of purchase price they qualify for, what their down payment could potentially be, and what their PITI and MI would be. So you're basically just going to teach them. Once you've been pre-qualified, the next step on um, creating your uh, roadmap to home ownership is going to be beginning your house hunt. This is how you would calculate your um, purchase price. These are the homes that you could potentially um, buy within that purchase price. You can maybe do some research and give them some listings that are current in the market, get them excited. Okay, now that I qualify for this much, I'd be able to afford this type of home, you know? The third and fourth lesson that you're gonna teach them is all gonna consist of teaching them about making an offer. What does that process consist of? What does that look like? You may wanna bring a realtor with you, again, to leverage it with them, bring some value to their business, engage with them, and have them explain how do you make an offer in today's market? You know, what influences an offer? What are contingencies? What are counter offers? And MJC has already developed a uh, first time home buyer seminar kit. So if you look on the top right corner, this is our um, seminar kit. It comes with a home buyer workbook. It comes in English and in Spanish. And it comes with flyers. It comes with a facilitator guide. So if you're looking to do seminars, side note, we have a full kit ready for you to start hosting seminars um, with, with your realtors, with your uh, referral partners, whoever you work with, credit people, um, um, home inspectors, you can um, host a seminar if you're ready to do something like that. But specifically for these two lessons, you're just going to use page 11 of our first time home buyer uh, presentation, and you're going to teach them about making an offer and getting your offer accepted. Question. Uh, yeah. That first time home buyer kit, it's available at readiness? Uh, no, that's available on our website, um, but you can also email me and I'll send you the link. Mm -hmm. um, so njsc.com, you can find the kit and you can fill out the information and then we'll send it to you. njsc.com mm -hmm. or just send me an email and I'll, I'll forward you the actual link. Um, and so the fifth lesson that you're going to teach um, to uh, these employees is going to be about home inspections. You're gonna break down the home inspection process. And ideally you would use, again, our first time home buyer kit presentation chapter, I mean, page 12, and that's what's gonna help you break down this information to them. And you can bring a home inspector, maybe you have one that you refer to your customers and they can explain how long a home inspection takes. It can take anywhere between two to three hours. It's, um, you know, it's something that you can, um, offer and that's included in your uh, contingencies. It's a negotiating tool, um, seller's, uh, it's a seller's condition report. You know, every, everything that has to do with home inspections, you would basically take this time to break down that information to them. Because I know when I was a realtor before I came on to MJIC, a lot of times buyers, they were so unaware of home inspections. They're like, wait, well, I have to have home inspections. Like, 
who do I call? I don't know anything about that. I don't have an electrician. I don't have a plumber. Like, and it would always frustrate them. So I feel like including this is super important because you're preparing them like ahead of time to know what's going to be in, uh, expected during this process. Um, so this is really valuable information that again, you can bring to them during these lessons. Then the sixth uh, lesson that you wanna teach is all about applying for your mortgage loan. And this is the only time you really want to sell yourself and pitch yourself. This is the time where you get to set expectations. You get to differentiate yourself. This gives you an opportunity to let them know what does your process on your end look like when they're applying for a mortgage with you? You know, what should they expect when they're processing, when they're in underwriting, when they're signing loan docs? What can you do for them when they are ready to go through all of this? You know, when they are ready to take the steps to become a first time home buyer. Um, so lesson six is when you really want to sell yourself, you want to give your information to them so that they can call you and they can actually start working with you to make this happen. And by this point, you've already spent six weeks with them. So they're going to trust you. They're going to believe in what you're saying because you've educated them on so much. You're going to build that relationship. And now you're just going to pitch why they should call you and why they should work with you as their lender. And then the second um, stop is just closing and you know getting those keys. And on the right hand side, I actually um, had MJC wrote a story about my uh, journey on becoming a first time home buyer. So that is me on the right hand side, holding my key to my first home. And I think it's really important to end it with like a success story because I myself followed a step by step guide, just as you see, like. Hispanic homeowner follows a step-by-step -step plan to buying a home. Everything that I just went through with you guys, I did all by myself. And it's like, yay, but it also was a lot of work. And I think um, I think when I've had better success um, executing this plan, had I had somebody guiding me, absolutely. It would have been so much better. So if you can um, teach them uh, all these step-by-step -step and be there for them and encourage them and educate them, you're bound to get them to become first time home buyers or encourage them to take those next steps. And if you can share a success story, um, they're likely to say, hey, if that person did it, so can I. So I think it's very important to kind of wrap up, you know, with some sort of success story and let them know there are others that are doing the same thing. I mean, I was 28 years old when I bought my first place. Some people would say, wow, 28 by yourself in the state of California, that's impossible. No, it's possible. You just need to know what you need to do. And, you know, these are the steps that they have to know, but they don't. So it's up to you as the mortgage professionals to be able to provide this platform. And I, we truly believe that if you're working with HR and you're focused on bringing this financial wellness program, you're more likely to get a lot of business out of that. So I'm going to kind of wrap it up with some statistics. Um, eight, um, in 2021, the NAR Home Buyer and Seller Generational Report said that 84% of buyers under 30 want help understanding the process. 84 do not understand those simple seven steps that we just went through. And one in four next-gen home buyers said their biggest challenge while they were buying a home was the lack of understanding. And this was just um, last year in June in 2022. So there's still a huge gap of people that do not understand the simple steps of home buying and want to understand. They want to understand. So if you can bring this value to them, then they're more likely to want to work with you and you're more likely to get a yes from HR department. So with that, I'm going to end there and open it up for any questions. So readiness is where we go, mm -hmm. right? And if we need any of your resources, we email you. Yes, yes, yes. And here's, um, if I go back, here's my contact information. So everybody who's online, uh, make sure you email me for any of the resources that I covered, or if you have any additional questions, uh, my email is Jocelyn, J-O-C-E-L-Y-N underscore Vasquez, B-A-S-Q-U-E-Z at MGIC.com. You can also text me 323-314-7064. Um, and we can talk any strategies, these strategies. Um, we have other resources, but I think 
If you focus on these three and you focus on the resources that I've shared with you, you're bound to be successful. So that's Playbook for Success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Any questions on Zoom? Don't be shy. You guys can unmute now. <laughs> Thank you. I, I understood everything. You, or did you record this, by the way, hon? Maybe. <laughs> I love the maybe. <laughs> we definitely right. keep it to a student. Um, of course, um, David goes ahead and finalizes it. Uh, we'll we'll go ahead and share it with you guys. But Thank you. Guys, um, does anybody else have any questions? Um, I do. I have one. Um, okay. Also, Jocelyn, is it yeah. uh, possible for you to, because I, I am registered with you, but I think under my old company. Oh, That's yes. My, you have when your I old put company. In my LMS, it still shows my old company. Yeah, can you send me an email so that I can connect with you and we can fix that? Thank you. Yeah, certainly. Let's fix that. Um, if you're pricing out on our website and for whatever reason, if it says the an old company that used to work, you used to work for, okay. let me know. Okay, let me know and let's fix that and let's put um, iCore as your company. And other than that, guys, um, I do want to mention that there will be a new uh, premium plan that's rolling out soon. So once I get the green light from iCore, I'm going to talk to you guys about that. So please join the next session. Once I get the green light from David, I'll let you know. Um, but when you are pricing out MI, please, please consider MJC because I am just commissioned like you guys, and every deal counts. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I stopped sharing. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, email me. Um, so we can fix that. Yeah. Because yeah. that maybe you're not getting the correct pricing. Yeah.